Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery, and the two systems you see out here in front of us are the ones that in which I've got my European night crawlers. There's a Vermi Bag Mini over here on the right, and over here is just your everyday bus box. It's actually one of the more shallow types of bus boxes that I've got. And the European night crawlers in these systems um, have been in here for a while. I've got some information on this little scribble scratch board, so why don't I pull this up here so we can look at it together. The the systems were last checked in on ten, 10 days ago, and it was at that time that the Vermi Bag Mini received a feeding, but the the other system did not. The other system was last fed actually 24 days ago at this point, and it was because I had already um, some time ago decided that it was time to call it quits on this system. It's getting pretty heavy, and the castings were looking pretty nice, so I figured I would just let those worms work on that last bit of food that was placed in there three and a half weeks ago at this point and you know let them just work that down so what we've got in there is just a nice batch of castings and that foraging phase as I refer to it will continue until such a time that I feel like they've really depleted most of the food if not all of it and and what we're left in there is um, just really nice castings on the other hand in here this system did receive food 10 days ago, so I can almost certainly tell you there's going to be some leftovers remaining in there, but um, 10 days ago I was already tossing around the idea of maybe also entering the foraging phase with this system. Main reason being that, you know, since it's already at the age of 645 days now, um, not so much the system being in service for that long, but the population in that system has been around for 645 days working from small containers gradually up to slightly larger containers and eventually working their way into here. I, um, I've been really wanting to kind of move away from the European Nightcrawlers in this Vermi Bag Mini. I believe that this Vermi Bag Mini would perform a lot better with a, uh, a different type of worm in there. So it's been fun having the European Nightcrawlers in here, but I believe at this point I'm going to be just emptying that system out on day 700 once those... Uh, worms reach their 100 weeks of age and they'll be relocated into some other system and this thing will be reset with some other type of worm at that point um, so we're not here to feed we're just here to see how things are looking and in here though I'm just curious to see what's going on with these little tiny white worms that I spotted last time we were in here so I'm just curious to see what's going on with those they were right there on the surface on the top paper that was out on the top and um, you know they looked weird they didn't look like pot worms pot worms I don't worry too much about these look a little bit larger and I still don't know quite what they were if they're a problem or an issue but uh, we're just gonna see how things are progressing in both of these systems so let me put that glove on and relocate the camera I think we'll start over here and we'll get started now during this foraging phase as I call it I like to try to keep things nice and damp within the system and that's the main reason that this plastic sheet covers the contents of the bin and it does a great job keeping the moisture within the system and there's always a huge number of worms hanging out right at the top presumably because that's where the moisture is collecting making the top surface a really tempting place for the worms to be and after 10 days all these pieces of paper that are more or less trying to line the top they're all just covered I mean entirely covered in castings just indicating to me that the worms have been you know cruising around up here a lot not only cruising around but also mating obviously because all over the place I could see cocoons and I'm just you know I'm not really going out of my way to look for them either I can see them one two three I saw them all over the place before. Four. Um, there's one right down there. Five. And probably a lot more that I'm not noticing. Six. Seven. All over the place. And then the other thing that you see over here, it looks so unusual. It almost seems like somebody took two worms and tied a knot to put them together. But these two worms, and these two worms, so there's two mating pairs right here. Oh, there's one right here too. Oh, and there's another one right there too. I don't know if it's maybe just the top surface or maybe it's just the cardboard and the plastic being there, maybe the pressure. They like the um, they like that environment for some reason it seems. I 
you know, I don't know why, but they really do seem to really enjoy hanging out here on the surface. My main theory on that is that they really enjoy the moisture. So now, I guess before I start disturbing things here, I should probably highlight the fact that I do see another little pocket of these little white worms, and I believe that these over here are the same thing. And over here too, okay? Now that I'm kind of slowing down and consciously looking for them, I am seeing them, even though I didn't really spot them at the first glance in here. I guess first glance you see the worms, you start seeing some cocoons. But yeah, there's um, there's definitely little pockets of what appear to be a tiny, tiny worm. And these actually do look like pot worms to me, just based on their size. They're very, very tiny. Just that last week when we were in this system, I thought I saw some that just looked unusually large. And I thought that if I saw them again, I might just start scooping them out and trying to eliminate them. But if they're just your everyday potworm and there's only this many of them, I'm not going to sweat it. I think that everything should be pretty much okay. I was just a little bit unsure of what they were since I thought they were something other than potworms. But at this point, I'm just going to stick to the theory that they probably are potworms and that they're not going to cause an issue in here. So let's press on. Let's just push some of this paper aside. Previously, I had attempted to just take all this scrap paper and use it to cover things up here on the top surface. But it's so tattered at this point. It's just like the fragments of paper. <laughs> I don't even know if this is going to be worth trying to spread out over the top. It's interesting, over on that piece of plastic too, the one that we just removed, I could definitely see cocoons on there too. Even more cocoons here now that we've removed the paper. Yeah, a whole lot of them everywhere. <laughs> we've just revealed a just a whole jackpot of cocoons now. I mean, especially over here. When I looked down, I saw, you know, three of them over here, two of them over there, three more over there. Um, so that that's really exciting to see. I guess there's no there's no one spot anymore where we would find where the food in this bin is located because I had pulled all of it out of here in the middle and then I had sort of created three sort of separate uh, little gullies into which I had scattered that food. So the food should be pretty much scattered all over the place within this system. And I think if we just start picking around through here, we're not going to find any one focused area where the food is. We might find here and there a, a piece of really yummy food that they really like and maybe they're kind of gathering around that one. Although, with these European Nightcrawlers, I don't tend to notice them really congregating any around any one particular type of food. Even if it's something that I'm assuming that they really like, you know, a couple worms will come up to get a bite of it, and the other ones will just kind of wait their turn. It's not the kind of behavior I'm used to, because when I first started out, I had Red Wigglers, and the Red Wigglers behave a little differently. They... They just pile right in and they, you know, jumble together and they um, they attack the food from all angles and they, they really make a scene. This is the stem of a banana. So we're starting to encounter little bits of the scraps that were still in here. But after 24 days, you would expect that even a, a tough food item like the stem of a, a banana would, you know, at this point be pretty well broken down. This little guy wants out. These guys don't like it when I come rummaging around within their space. I find a lot of them trying to crawl out of the system. I was actually contemplating the use of some sort of a, a buffer. I um, Buffers are what some people refer to as sort of a, a substance which would alter the pH within a system. So one of the concerns within a worm bin is that you might hit um, a high level of acidity, acidity, <laughs> within your system. And it's at that time, sometimes you'll start to see certain types of, certain types of creatures um, appearing in great numbers, greater numbers than normal. So, uh, 
that's when you would start using some sort of a, a buffer or some buffers to uh, try to neutralize the acid to try to bring the pH back to normal usually in the interest of trying to I, I guess make sure that the system doesn't go out of kilter too much and remain nice and comfortable for the worms but also to reduce whatever little creepy crawly pests may have started to thrive within the system because of those conditions. I'm, uh, I'm kind of jumbling things up and now it's really, you know, a rough top surface. But you can see after a few days, this was the way it looked a few days ago when we were last in here, 10 days ago, inspecting how things are doing. But you could see when the worms start to cruise up here and deposit all their castings, they sort of backfill all that um, surface where the... Um, the little craters and pits and everything are then you end up with a nice level surface again in the end so uh, I was curious to see if that's what ended up here afterwards because it was so um, bumpy on top but when we opened up things were pretty level so the worms come up and they drop all their castings down into all the little crevices and stuff and then uh, it all kind of levels off on its own the moisture levels in here are definitely high, and I believe that that's um, to the benefit of the worms. The benefit is that the material is very approachable everywhere. There's no particular spots in the bin that are really dry and um, unwelcoming for the worms. Worms can't really do too good in a very dry space since they need to breathe through their skins and the moisture permits that to happen. And as soon as they start to dry out, that's you know, going to start causing them a lot of distress, and they'll go looking for a more damp, comfortable place to be. But since everything in this system, even on the edges, is really nice and damp, I I know that, you know, even if there's food scraps on the very, very outer edges, that that stuff is going to get just as much attention as any of the other um, food and scraps and lingering bits of leftover bedding and everything, so... I think keeping things covered is going to be the best way to promote ongoing uh, breakdown of the materials in this bin. And I think they're doing good. I mean, there was a banana stem in there, which is among the more tough things that do take a little longer to get broken down. I think the um, I think the stuff that I'd really like to see vanish. Hey, buddy, get back in here. Um, the stuff that I'd really like to see them do away with is all these little stems of the leaves. I must have put leaves in here pretty late in the game. I usually try not to do that anymore, um, specifically because of the stems of the leaves. And then there's other things in here too. There's the, um, this is probably avocado shell. And you can see it breaks apart pretty readily in between my fingers. I can tear it up and do away with it. So those are all the tougher types of things that the worms are going to need a little bit more time to do away with. So we're going to continue to try to keep this material nice and damp for them. We'll, uh, we'll periodically check in and I believe that this tilling up of the material helps a lot with um, uh, providing airflow. So we don't end up with any sections of the bin that are maybe a little bit anaerobic, which means just the absence of air. So. Things are looking pretty nice in here. I had already, you know, also thought about trying to help the system get to the finish line a little bit more quickly by actually removing, you know, banana stems and avocado um, shells or even leaf stems. I don't know. I might, I might actually do that at some point. Because so if we come in here to see how things are doing and we've got those things right there in front of us we can just as easily pick them out rather than just continue to blend them in and then we can maybe dump them into the vermi bag mini where you know there's going to be a little bit more time remaining before we try to drive towards the harvesting of the castings in there so that was something i considered doing today but we're not going to do that now maybe next go around if we feel like the the materials in the bin are not getting done away with as quickly as we would like so yeah, you could see those few scraps of paper that I just bought back that had been previously doing a great job covering the entire surface of the bin had been reduced to just shreds, little bits of confetti everywhere. And this piece over here looks like maybe the biggest. And, you know, 
they're treating that as food too and they're welcome to do so but that would be another thing we could potentially remove from the system if we really want them to focus on all the tiny small scraps as opposed to eating larger bits that are in there so i like the way things are looking in here in this 123 day old european nightcrawler system 24 days of so-called foraging making pretty nice progress on the leftovers and uh, I think also spreading them out probably helped a little bit too you know instead of having a big pile of food right in the middle you know the worms can approach all that leftover food from all angles at this point as opposed to some of it being inaccessible because it's ju all jumbled in upon itself so let's uh let's shift the camera over to the vermi bag mini see how things look in there so now down here in the vermi bag mini same story we're using plastic to cover things up to try to prevent excess evaporation from allowing the bin to become too dry and that typically results in worms wanting to come up for the condensing moisture that would normally just turn into water vapor and leave the system but the plastic capturing it and forcing its recirculation back down in the system tends to create a, a fairly popular place so for example this um, coffee filter had been placed in here last time we were in here and there was nothing on it it was just a clean brand new coffee filter and you can see it's covered in castings which means the worms have been hanging out on top of it and when I remove it you could clearly see the worms are also hanging out right below it not to mention the fact that they're doing a great job nibbling away bits and pieces of it considering it's only been in here for 10 days they've certainly done a good job whittling away bits and pieces of it and they're welcome to do that that's the reason it's there it's just another food source a lot of people will tell you that the night crawlers really do seem to favor the more carbon rich type food sources like paper and things like that and i think that's right there is pretty good evidence of that it's not to say that the food that was placed in here 10 days ago will have been untouched because they'll eat that stuff too so here's a really old banana stem and I, I did sort of shred it there by poking my thumb through it and breaking it a lot of times i just like to leave them to be able to observe the actual wear that occurs due to the worms working on it not due to me breaking it up in my fingertips but there i go breaking up a avocado shell too <laughs> with my fingers this is so weird i wonder what this is a flimsy little piece of something and it just tears in my fingers maybe it's just, just a chunk of leaf or something but it just seems thicker out here it almost makes me wonder if it could be banana peel at this point whatever we're never going to see that again it's to totally been shredded so i can't seem to resist giving things a little tug between my fingers to see if they'll break in between the you know tension that i can exert with a couple of my fingertips because if that happens then it's really not much left holding it together all this material on the top it's all just this and that all kinds of whatever somewhat drier stuff by being out on the surface even though you know the plastic's doing a good job somehow this bag just seems to have a lot more airflow probably because of the material that it's made out of it's the whole uh it's the whole idea is that the bag allows for airflow and a lot of oxygen to enter the system through the walls but i believe it also um, contributes to the loss of moisture a little bit too so here too I thought I had at one point saw um, mites hanging out in this system I thought both of these systems had mites in them for some reason and they might have mites in them but at no point did I see any evidence of that being a, a problem with sort of like a huge amount of them so the idea of you know putting some sort of buffers into these systems too was an idea I had kicked around but I'm not going to do so unless I feel that it is really necessary to take action to try to neutralize what might potentially be a overly acidic situation I mean sometimes just by adding the crushed eggshells which is my preferred form of grit that I add with my feedings sometimes I am uh, just by default adding a uh, pH neutralizing buffer 
material. Um, but I've also got lime that I bought home from the big box store from the garden center. It's crushed dolomite is what I believe it is. And it um, it's really cheap, you know, like a huge bag for like four bucks. Actually, it turned out when I bought home that big heavy bag, I had a little bit home at home already. <laughs> so I didn't even need to bring any home. So I, uh, I, I don't remember if I had added any sort of buffers to this system other than just the eggshell, crushed eggshell grit that they get as part of their feedings from time to time. But I'm, you know, kind of glad that I've got that stuff on hand just to make sure that if I find one of my systems showing evidence of possibly being a little bit too acidic, then I have a way to work on neutralizing that to make it more comfortable for the worms. A couple of the things that I'm bumping into are those bits that would take a little longer to break down another banana stem. And I, I'm trying to remember what types of foods were placed in here 10 days ago. I think it was just a lot of little, you know, kitchen scraps, little bits of vegetable chopped up, maybe shavings of carrots or whatever, I don't know. Just uh, somehow I have this vague recollection of the materials that were fed most recently as being stuff that should have broken down pretty readily. You know, unless it's something like this, maybe the, the butt end of a sort of vegetable where the stem is a little bit tougher than the rest of the material. The stem will take a little bit longer, but the rest of the stuff will get nibbled away gradually. Another banana stem. There's a number of them here and there. And those are the only things I'm really recognizing. That stem, I don't know where, what it was from. Obviously, it's a stem, but... Um, okay, here too. This is one other type of material that I think I will continue to see from time to time. It's just a avocado pit. And I had actually taken a knife and I was able to slice the avocado pit into little little thin slices and I think that's really going to help a great deal with the breakdown of those materials because if you put an entire um, avocado pit into your worm bins then you know you could wait for that to uh, you know get eaten for months and months it'll take forever but I believe by slicing it into thin slices it'll become uh, you know right away it'll start becoming very easy to just bust up in between your fingers and the worms will be able to eat it up pretty quickly. There's a whole bunch of it in here. I've been adding chopped up avocado seeds to multiple systems but I definitely remember this one getting a couple portions of it recently. So I must say most of what I picked out of here was you know mostly bedding, mostly bits of paper and stuff. A few slower composting food items but not much left over from the feeding 10 days ago. So this was the system where I was a little bit um, up in the air in terms of, you know, hey, is it time for this system to be um, transi transitioned out of its typical feeding routine and into the foraging mode? And I believe that I am now kind of going to commit to that. We are going to definitely allow that to happen at this point. So you could see right away out on the outer edges of the system, it's a lot drier. And, you know, all these little bits of paper that are on, out on the edges, they're never going to get broken down. If the, uh, if the material is this dry, the worms are just going to steer clear of that. So I think anything on the very edge, I'll try to blend it in so that it can get kind of rehydrated and have some sort of a chance of getting broken down by the worms. And I've actually thought that this system might even benefit from a little bit of a injection of moisture because right away you could see how dry things are on these outer edges. I had often mentioned that things seemed a little bit arid in here but I would always resist the urge to try to do anything about it but I think the time has come to maybe add a little bit of moisture. This is unusual too. It looks like some sort of a mold or something has sort of taken hold over here and is growing. Unless, of course, what is this stuff? I don't want to blast through this too quickly and not be able to identify what I'm looking at here. It does seem like mold. 
Although, I thought I had maybe applied some sort of buffer into here as well. I thought I had maybe used some of that lime in this system. And maybe I just kind of, I don't know, maybe I had just sort of stirred it down into the material and it just remained down there. So I can't tell. I thought that if it had, I don't know, thought that if it was was mold that it would have some sort of an odor to it but I don't sense anything interesting so yeah I mean once I stir stuff up from the outer edges all this dry stuff that just doesn't seem to be getting a whole lot of attention would probably benefit a lot from um, a little extra moisture I'm just trying to think of how to best apply the moisture I'm going to level things off here to the best of my ability. And I think I'm just going to come in here with the squirt bottle and give it a, a nice squirt down. I was even thinking about just dropping a couple ice cubes into here and let them gradually melt and release their moisture down into the system below. I think for now, I'm just going to give this thing a squirt down. We'll give it a squirt down, we'll restore things the way we found them, and then maybe I'll come back down here with some ice cubes. And drop them into the system and I think that should help restore moisture but I'm gonna do it right around the perimeter where it's clearly you know getting a lot of airflow through the bag and turning things into a little bit a little bit drier than I think the worms would want to have so let's just give them a little immediate relief with the squirt bottle and then later I'll come back with the ice cubes and just position them around the outer edge and hopefully that'll help and then I guess we'll come back in here I don't know I guess 10 days maybe another 10 day interval I don't really see a need to check in very frequently on these systems if they're both just foraging at this point but things are coming along pretty nice in here you know definitely leftovers lots of little scraps of this and that and I think with a little bit more moisture that um, these worms will be able to work away that material a little bit more readily than if it's just sitting there dry. If it's sitting there dry, they're not going to be able to do anything with it. It's just going to sit there. I think that's enough for now. We'll, uh, we'll give them some more moisture at a later time off camera. Drop in some ice cubes. That stuff will gradually melt and release its moisture down into the outer edges. Hopefully restoring things in this bin to a slightly more cozy environment for them. And these plastic bags are crucial to keeping the moisture in here as well. So without these being here, the moisture would simply just escape into the air and leave the bin quite readily. I've even thought about maybe doing a better job covering things up here. You can see I've got certain spots on the surface that don't fully get covered. Maybe if I take a little bit more care, I can just make sure that there's no openings where it can exceedingly emit more of its moisture and lose it. All right, so that's where I stand now with my European night crawlers. I've got a little bit of um, cleanup to do here. I'll uh, rinse off my glove and put these systems back away where they belong. But I'm not going to take your time with that. Let me just really quickly say before I go, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. It's always really appreciated. If you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.